AFTV Julian, I did warn you before the game. When you was telling me three fours, I said, listen, they're a very good side. They've got a very... Yeah, they're missing Salah and yes, they're missing Mane, but <laughs> it's the same defence. You know, with you know world-class players in their defence. It's a top player in midfield in Fabinho and that, and we lacked in the midfield. And also, you could see today, innit, that some of the players that came back, like Tommy Asu, they just looked off the pace, didn't they? I did get it wrong mm. on one part, which was Liverpool. I underestimated Liverpool. They were very, very well organised, mm. and they came here and they wanted to play. But unfortunately, you missed the greatest part of the game, which was before Liverpool scored, and we were looking completely different. We came out of there looking like we were going to that Wembley final. The players were very enthusiastic. The tempo was high. I, you know, I mean, it was really happening, and we got slightly unlucky. Now, I'm not going to take anything away from Liverpool. I'm not going to say that they were lucky to win that game, but that first goal was unfortunate. I mean, Tommy Asu slipped. It can happen to anyone at any time. He slipped over. It looked like it took a he's, slight. He's, he's looked it, off the pace today. He's been. He's been listen, listen. It's not a criticism of him. He's he's been one of our most consistent players this season. We know he's been out injured, right? But you could see he weren't up to speed today. That was my opinion. Yeah, he wasn't as good as the high standards that he set himself in pretty much every single other game that we've seen him play. Mm. But that goal, I wouldn't blame him for it. He slipped, it took a slight deflection, and then the game changed. And what happened then was we were chasing the game and Liverpool controlled it. And again, it's fine margins. So I wouldn't say it was disastrous. I'm not upset with the performance. I was infused by the performance. Just didn't go for us. But what infused you about that? I, I, I wasn't infused by the performance. You know, I mean, I, I thought, listen, as I said, I, I understand the performance, you know, we're bringing on Thomas Party. The guy's just, you know, two days ago, just got knocked out of the, the AFCON. I, I, I didn't even think he should even be figuring. We, we've got loads of players that it's, it's very well documented. They've been out, they haven't played for a couple of weeks, and it showed. It looked like that today. Okay, on, on the party one, I wouldn't have brought him on either. Mm. I'd have probably started the guy. The reason, yeah, I mean, I look at why he got sent off. Lee was quite right. He was naive. He showed ill-discipline. He's off the pace. He was off the pace, but how much did that have to do with the fact that he came on with 20 minutes to go when we're chasing the well, game? Does it have to do with the fact that he's had to just fly back from Cameroon, right? Just see, you you know, you're playing for your country, right? You have an embarrassing defeat. You're knocked out of the tournament, right? So already you're not feeling, you know, mentally great. And then you've got to fly all the way back to England, right? And then come straight into a semi-final. I, I'm not too sure, you know, so... He said, I don't think that was the wisest thing. OK, you talk about him flying back. It's six hours, 35 minutes back from Cameroon. Jeez. There is one hour time difference. He would have flown either first class or private jet. It took us longer to get to Liverpool. Yeah, but we weren't playing, were we? <laughs> <laughs> no. We weren't out on the pitch playing. <laughs> no, we weren't. The, the fact that he was he's played two days ago, I don't think that should have... an that much of an effect on a professional player. Mm. I think the more you tell players they're tired and look you've flown so far, oh isn't that difficult, oh you're depressed, then you will become and it puts them down. I don't think he's, you know, the, the best thing that could have happened for him is to come here, play well and we to win. That would be the best prescription for him. Well he misses Sunday now, how important is that game on Sunday? I mean, now nah, that's it now, all we've got to play for now is top four, which is at least we've got that to play for, if not a trophy. But, you know, it could be something that if we were to achieve that, we could look back and say, well, actually, all right, we ain't won a trophy, but, you know, I mean, it's been a half decent season. Can this team get top four? OK, for the importance of this club, Sunday was more important than tonight. Yes, it would have been lovely to go to Wembley, but I don't think Arteta will be remembered for winning a League Cup. He will be remembered if he gets us back into the Champions League and then we can build from that. And I know Lee said we don't want players coming here um, that are just coming here for Champions League football. The reality of professional sport and professional football now is that, unfortunately, we're not going to get players that grew up in Avenal Road that just kicked a ball outside <laughs> Highbury. We're, we're looking at a global game. And a global game means that they are going to be encouraged to come here for Champions League football because we can pay the players more. They can be on the world stage and that's where we need to be.